We are excited to be making our very first set of predictions for Oxford AQA A-Level Psychology. This year, we're expanding our support to help even more students with their revision and exam preparation. Laura, our Head of Psychology, has done an in-depth review of the topics and has used this information to create psychology predicted papers specifically for this year. You can get all four predicted papers for paper one, two, three, and four we've developed for this year, along with all the video walkthroughs. To access these predicted papers, simply follow the link in the description below. Now, alongside these papers, Laura has also created video walkthroughs for all the papers so you can see exactly what a top band answer looks like in psychology. These videos will guide you through the skills needed to interpret questions, understand what's being asked and structure your responses effectively too. You'll encounter questions designed in the same style as those you'll see in your exams, enabling you to break down the questions, identify what needs to be included in your answers and how to structure them. This will help you feel confident and fully prepared when you sit the real exam. Now, remember to revise all topics as these are just predictions. We don't have any additional information or insights into the actual exams. We haven't seen the real papers. Okay, let's get straight into it with paper one. Now, we know for paper one, introductory topics in psychology, there are three sections in the paper. That's memory, social psychology, and psychopathology. And we'll go through each of these topics in this video. So just remember, you can use the timestamps in the description to jump to the section that you're interested in, or you can just sit back and listen. Let's start with memory there. So look into the multi-store model of memory. Familiarise yourself with the structure and processes of the multi-store model, including sensory memory, short-term memory and long-term memory. Make sure you can describe how information is transferred between these stores and be ready to evaluate the model by discussing evidence that supports or contradicts it, such as research on the distinct capacities and durations of these stores. Then revisit the working memory model, know the components of the working memory model, central executive, phonological loop, visual spatial sketch pad, and episodic buffer, and how they interact. Be prepared to discuss the strengths, such as its explanation of multitasking and limitations, including criticisms regarding the vague role of the central executive. Here, you should also brush up on types of long-term memory, episodic and procedural, Understand the distinctions between episodic and procedural memories with episodic involving personal experiences and procedural involving skills. And then finally here, just look into the use of cognitive interview. Review the principles of the cognitive interview and how it aims to improve accuracy in eyewitness testimony. Be ready to evaluate its effectiveness, considering strengths such as research supporting its use in enhancing recall and limitations such as the practical challenges of training law enforcement. The next section of this paper is social psychology. Revise the locus of control. Be prepared to explain locus of control as a personality dimension that can influence behaviour in social situations, particularly in relation to resisting conformity or obedience. Understand the difference between internal and external loci and be ready to evaluate the concept with supporting research, including its applicability to real world settings. We also think you should look into the legitimacy of authority as an explanation of obedience. Understand how the perception of legitimate authority influences obedience, such as in Milgram's research. Be able to discuss factors that enhance perceived legitimacy and evaluate this explanation by considering supporting evidence and alternative explanations like dispositional factors. Also, you'll want to revise types of conformity. So know the three types of conformity, compliance, identification and internalisation, and be able to distinguish between them with examples. Prepare to discuss the situational factors influencing each type and evaluate their relevance in explaining social behaviour. Finally here, revisit Ash's conformity research. So make sure you can describe Ash's experiment on conformity, including the aim, procedure, findings and conclusions. Be prepared to evaluate the study by discussing strengths, such as its control design and limitations, including ethical concerns and questions about ecological validity. You've also got the final section of this paper, psychopathology. Revisit the deviation from ideal mental health definition of abnormality. Understand Jehoda's criteria for ideal mental health, including autonomy, accurate perception of reality, and resistance to stress. 
Be able to describe how deviation from these criteria is used to define abnormality and evaluate this approach by discussing its practical application and limitations such as cultural bias. Also here, look into characteristics of depression. Familiarise yourself with the key symptoms of depression, including emotional, behavioural and cognitive characteristics. Be able to apply this knowledge to scenarios and discuss how these characteristics impact an individual's daily functioning. Be sure to look at Beck's negative triad explanation of depression to understand this cognitive model of depression, which suggests that negative schemas about the self, world and future contribute to depressive symptoms. Be prepared to evaluate the theory by discussing strengths such as its support from cognitive behavioural therapy research and limitations like the difficulty in establishing causation. And finally, revise systematic desensitisation. Know the stages of systematic desensitisation used to treat phobias, including relaxation techniques and gradual exposure. Be ready to evaluate this approach by discussing its effectiveness, ethical considerations and comparison with alternative therapies like flooding or cognitive therapies. OK, those are our unit one predictions. Next, let's move on to our unit two predictions. We know for paper two, there are three sections in this paper as well. Biopsychology, cognitive development and research methods. And we'll go through each of these topics. So let's start with the biopsychology section. Revise the nervous system. Make sure you can describe the roles of the central and peripheral nervous systems in processing and responding to information. Understand how these systems coordinate to control voluntary and involuntary actions. Be sure to also brush up on the endocrine system and the role of glands. Know the main glands in the endocrine system, including the adrenal and pituitary glands, and how they release hormones. Be prepared to explain the role of these hormones in regulating behaviours like stress response and growth. Look into the role of adrenaline in fight or flight too. Understand how adrenaline prepares the body for a fight or flight response, increasing heart rate and blood flow to muscles. Be ready to discuss the adaptive function of this response in preparing the body to confront or escape threats. You've also got the neurotransmitters in synaptic transmission here. Know how neurotransmitters facilitate communication between neurons and synapses, including examples like dopamine and serotonin. Be able to describe the process of synaptic transmission and how imbalances in neurotransmitters can affect behaviour. And then, of course, look into localization of function in the brain. Be familiar with the concept of localization and examples such as the motor cortex, Broca's area and Vernick's area. Be ready to explain how different areas are specialized for particular functions and the implications of damage to these areas. Another section of unit two is cognitive development. Revise class inclusion here. Understand Piaget's stages of cognitive development, focusing on the concept of class inclusion and how it reflects children's developing ability to categorise. Be prepared to describe each stage's key characteristics and Piaget's theories with examples. Next, also look at Bayajan's violation of expectations research. Make sure you can describe Bayajan's research, including its aim, procedure, findings and conclusion on infants' understanding of object permanence. Be ready to evaluate the study, noting strengths such as its controlled design and limitations like potential issues with ecological validity. And finally here, look into the mirror neuron system in social cognition. Understand the role of mirror neurons in social cognition, such as how they help us understand others' intentions and emotions. Be prepared to explain how this system contributes to empathy and social understanding, along with evaluation points, including supporting evidence and limitations. Finally, for unit two, don't forget about research methods. Recognise that research methods content can appear in all four exam papers, not just paper two. You'll find dedicated research methods sections in both paper two and paper three, though. Always be ready, familiarise yourself with examples of research and identify key elements such as hypotheses, variables, control measures, samples used, ethics and data collected. Exposure to different research scenarios will better prepare you for the new piece of research you'll face in this section. 
Okay, that's unit two. Let's now move on to unit three. Now, we know for paper three, advanced topics and research methods two, there are three sections again in the paper. Psychology of sleep, schizophrenia and research methods. And we'll go through each of these topics like before. Now, first up, we have psychopathology of sleep. Revisit different types of sleep. That's non-REM and REM. Be ready to describe the stages of sleep, including the distinctions between non-REM and REM sleep. Make sure you can explain the characteristics of each stage, such as brainwave patterns and physiological changes, and understand how they contribute to sleep quality. Next up, revise the disruption of biological rhythms, specifically shift work. Understand how shift work can disrupt circadian rhythms, leading to sleep disturbances and potential health risks. Be prepared to discuss studies on shift work, explaining both the physical and psychological effects of circadian misalignment, as well as methods to mitigate these effects. Finally here, do also brush up on the role of personality factors in insomnia. Be familiar with how personality traits may influence susceptibility to insomnia. Focus on factors like anxiety and neuroticism and be ready to explain how these can exacerbate sleep difficulties. Prepare evaluation points, considering strengths and limitations of research on personality and sleep. The next section of the paper is schizophrenia. Here, we think you should brush up on cognitive explanations and the focus on dysfunctional thought processes. Know the key cognitive explanations for schizophrenia, such as faulty information processing and attentional biases. Be able to describe how these thought processes contribute to symptoms like delusions and hallucinations. Be prepared to evaluate these explanations, considering their support from cognitive research and limitations, like the difficulty in determining causation. Also revise the dopamine hypothesis. Understand the dopamine hypothesis, which suggests that schizophrenia may be linked to dopamine dysregulation in the brain. Be able to explain how both hyperactivity and hyperactivity of dopamine contribute to different symptoms. Prepare evaluation points, including evidence from drug studies and criticisms regarding the oversimplification of neurotransmitter roles. Finally, consider reliability and validity in the diagnosis of schizophrenia. Focus on the challenges in reliably and validly diagnosing schizophrenia, such as the overlap of symptoms with other disorders and the subjectivity of diagnostic criteria. Be ready to discuss the key studies or criticisms about diagnosis reliability, like interrater reliability and validity concerns, including cultural and diagnostic bias. And of course, remember that Unit 3 has a section on research methods too. Like I said before, research methods content can appear in all four exam papers, not just Paper 3. You'll find dedicated research methods sections in Paper 2 and Paper 3, like I said before, so always be ready. Familiarise yourself with examples of research and identify key elements such as hypotheses, variables, control measures, samples used, ethics and data collected. Exposure to different research scenarios is going to better prepare you for the new piece of research you'll face in this section as well. OK, that is Unit 3. Last of all, we've got Unit 4. Now, we know for Paper 4, Approaches and Application, there are three sections in the paper. Approaches in Psychology, Issues and Debates in Psychology and Applied Psychology, Work and the Individual. Now, we're going to go through each of these topics in this video again. So let's start with our first section of Unit 4, Approaches in Psychology. Revise the cognitive approach, specifically schemas. Understand the concept of schemas as mental frameworks that help us organise and interpret information. Be ready to explain how schemas influence perception, memory and behaviour. Revisit the social learning theory too. Be prepared to describe the key processes in social learning theory, such as observation, imitation and vicarious reinforcement. Make sure you can explain Banjura's Bobo doll study and evaluate the theory by discussing strengths like its empirical support and real world application and limitations such as the influence of biological factors. And finally, for this section, look into the biological approach. Know the biological approach, focusing on the influence of genes, brain structures and neurotransmitters on behaviour. Be ready to discuss strengths such as its scientific basis and use of objective methods like brain scans and limitations like reductionism and potential ethical issues in genetic research. The next section of this paper is issues and debates in psychology. Revise determinism. 
understand the concept of determinism and how it suggests that behaviour is controlled by internal or external factors rather than free will. Be able to distinguish between types of determinism, such as biological and environmental determinism, and evaluate the debate with strengths like the scientific predictability of behaviour and limitations, including ethical implications. We also have the nature-nurture debate. Be familiar with the debate around whether behaviour is influenced more by genetics, that's nature, or environment, nurture. Prepare to evaluate the strengths of each side, such as the role of genetic research supporting nature and studies on environmental influence supporting nurture. Consider an interactionist approach that incorporates both influences. And here, look into psychology as a science. Be able to discuss the scientific nature of psychology, focusing on aspects like objectivity, replicability and control. Be ready to evaluate psychology strengths as a science, such as producing reliable knowledge and limitations like ethical concerns and the reduction of complex behaviours to simpler components. Our final section is applied psychology, work and the individual. Revise the job demands, resources model. Understand the job demands, resources or JDR model, which suggests that work stress arises from the balance between job demands and the resources available to meet them. Be prepared to evaluate this model by discussing its practical applications in improving workplace conditions and limitations such as individual differences in handling stress. Then look into cultural differences in personal space. Be ready to explain how personal space expectations vary across cultures and how these differences impact workplace interactions. Prepare to evaluate by discussing the importance of cultural sensitivity in diverse work environments and potential challenges when cultural norms conflict. Revise communication at work too, specifically non-verbal communication. Understand the role of non-verbal cues such as body language, eye contact and facial expressions in workplace communication. Be ready to evaluate the importance of non-verbal communication, including its effectiveness in enhancing understanding and limitations such as misinterpretation across cultures. And finally, look into the effects of group membership. Focus on how group membership influences behaviour, including concepts like social identity theory, in-group favouritism and out-group bias. Be prepared to evaluate by discussing the positive effects of group membership on cohesion and morale, as well as potential downsides like stereotyping and groupthink. OK, those are our Oxford AQI predictions for all four units of your A-level studies. We really hope they are useful. As always, don't forget to revise everything you're concerned about because these are just predictions, but we hope they can act as a really useful starting point for your revision. Our predicted papers are available now with free walkthroughs, so do be sure to check those out. Best of luck in your exams.